Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I am going to take a look into this little module. Now, this module has been sent to me by Robu.in. So, if I just take a closer look at the module itself, it says MP1584. And if we look into the chip which is in, in this module, it's actually MP1584CN. So here I have the datasheet of MP1584. Now this datasheet says it's a 3 amp 1.5 megahertz 28 volts step down converter. So which means it's a buck regulator and its frequency can be achieved, I think, uh, up to 1.5 megahertz as per the datasheet. Now it has a wide operating input range of 4.5 volt to 28 volts, and the switching frequency could be set between 100 kilohertz to 1.5 megahertz. So it's quite a high frequency switching regulator. And here is the typical application diagram. If you just uh, want to take a look. So here, if I look into the electrical characteristic of this chip, we have a input voltage range between 4.5 volt to 28 volt, and we have the current limit of between 4 amps to 4.7 amps, which is the absolute maximum rating. Now, obviously, the uh, data sheet uh, tells us that for normal operation, the maximum limit would be 3 amps because that is what the data sheet claims but the absolute maximum could uh, go up to 4.7 amps then we have a recommended frequency of 900 kilohertz when we set the r frequency or the frequency setting resistance to 100 kilo ohm so at this frequency the uh, frequency of the switching regulator will be 900 kilohertz so here is the uh, formula to calculate the frequency of the switching regulator. If you are interested in making your own or you want to customize the circuit, you can obviously use this formula to calculate the frequency. And with the help of this equation, we can actually set the output voltage. So V feedback is actually uh, in order to control the output voltage and it's controlled by the R2 and R1. So it's simply a potential divider formula. So now I am at the robo.in website in the listing of MP1584 DC to DC 3 amp adjustable buck module and it cost me 99 rupees and obviously it is Indian rupees and if we look into the uh, details here uh, there are some typical applications given for breadboard power supply robotics and some uh, microcontroller projects. Now, if I just take a look into the specification of this chip, we can see the input voltage range is between 4.5 to 28 volt and the output voltage could be between 0.8 to 20 volt, which we can set obviously using the potentiometer. Maximum output current is obviously 3 amps and the typical output voltage is 1.8 volts. Now, this is typical output voltage, but it's written A, and I think it, it should be V, not A. So, its typical output voltage is set at 1.8 volts. Then we have typical switching frequency, which tells as 1 megahertz, and we have maximum switching frequency of 1.5 megahertz. It claims a conversion efficiency of 96% which uh, we will take a look in a moment and then the output ripple is less than 30 percent accuracy of plus or minus 0.5 percent which then the dimension of the module itself so now i will just uh, shoulder a couple of wires into the input and output terminals and then using my bench power supply and the dc load i will test the performance of this module now in the back side of the module there is an arrow mark indicating the in and the out and obviously in the front side we have these little potentiometer to control the output voltage then we have the mp1584 chip we have a few resistor a few capacitor and a diode and obviously a big 
inductor now i highly doubt this inductor could take up to 3 amps of current so we will just have a look into this in a moment and then we will see whether it claims the absolute values or it's just a fake claim so now i have hooked up a couple of wires into the input and the output terminals and i will now just connect the output to my dc electronic load now here is my electronic load which obviously if you have seen my previous video i have made this using my own code and if you are interested to build your own dc electronic load i will put a link in the card here so you can have a look into that video as well so i will just hook up the output of this module into this load and then i will be using my bench power supply to power the circuit so now i have connected the module to the electronic load and i have set the power supply to 5 volt for the moment and i have set the current limit to its maximum limit that is 5 amp now i will just check once again whether i have connected the uh, right way around because that is the very common type of mistake that i often do so here is the out positive which goes to the load positive and the out minus which goes to the load negative and towards the input side i have hooked up the in plus to red wire and the in minus to the black wire before i connect the electronic load to power i will just turn on the power supply to see what is the output voltage at the moment so i will turn on the voltmeter of in my multimeter and i will turn on the power supply so i hope it shouldn't go bang and it's working fine so let's see the output voltage so here i have a output voltage of 3.836 volts at the moment so i will just try to increase the voltage to the power supply so i will just increase the power supply voltage to say 6 volts and the voltage at the output also increases which means that the default setting is far more than the measured value so i will just increase the voltage towards the input to see what is the output voltage that is set so i have okay so as i increase now the voltage it's not increasing from 9.37 volts so i hope it's the maximum voltage that is being set so now i will just uh, set this to 10 volts for the simplicity so if i rotate this clockwise the voltage actually decreases so i will have to rotate this anti-clockwise Ten point zero nine, which is fair, because as I load this, there will be a slight voltage drop as well. Now the input voltage is set at fifteen volts, so I will just keep it for the moment, and then I will turn on the electronic load. So here I have connected the power to my electronic load, and I will obviously test this at constant current so constant current and then i will obviously start with the lowest value that is 100 milliamps to see whether it's supplying a stable current or not so i will hit start and it's now drawing 100 milliamps of current and in the input side it's actually drawing 71 milliamps of current so at 15 volts it's 71 milliamps and at 10 volts it's 100 milliamps now i will check whether it's holding the voltage exactly at 10 volts and exactly it is holding at 10.07 volts so now my second test would be to test at 500 milliamps so now at 500 milliamps it's drawing around 352 milliamps at 15 volt and if i check the output voltage of this module 
so it's actually again 10.06 or 07 volts so very very accurate so i will just note down these uh, voltage and current ratings and i will then just calculate the efficiency at the end so now i will test this at 1 amp current so at 1 amps current it's drawing 700 and around 7 or 709 milliamps of current i will just take 708 for the average so i will just check the output voltage as well using my multimeter and yes it is exactly 10.07 volts so now my second test would be at 1.5 amps but this time i want to increase the input voltage to 20 volts so now the input voltage is changed to 20 volts and the output voltage is set to 10 volts and the current is set to 1.5 amps So now at 1.5 amps output and the output voltage, if I check, it's exactly again 10.08 volt. So at 10.08 volt, the output is 1.5 amp current and the input is 20 volt and 805 milliamp current. So now my next test would be at 2 amps current. So I will set this at 2 amp and then start as the current rises up i will just check the output voltage and it's again 10.09 volts and it's accurate so now towards the input side we are getting 20 volt and 1.070 amp and towards the output we are getting 2 amp at 10.07 volts now the next test would be to test at 2.5 amps as the current rises i will check the voltage as well so yes it is 10.10 volts so at 10.09 volts the current is 2.5 amps and towards the input we have 20 volts and 1.33 amp now i will be testing this at 3 amps which is the maximum of this module so here i have to check the output voltage as well so if i just check it and it's still at 10.10 volts so it's very very accurate at 3 amps of current and towards the input side it's drawing 1.610 amps of current so i will just note it down and then finally i will do one more test to test at the maximum input voltage which is 28 volts and the minimum output voltage which uh, i assume it was 1.8 volts so at first i will set the output to 1.8 volts and then i will turn on the load now this unit actually has a minimum voltage of 1.65 volts so that is what i have set and the input voltage is set at 28 volts and i will test this at 3 amps of current to see whether it's able to handle it or not it's the most extreme test that i'm going to do so now the current starts increasing and it's drawing around 312 milliamps at the input and i will just check the output voltage it's around 1.94 volts so at a load of 3 amps it's actually overshooting little bit but so i will just note down the readings so here i have put the results in a excel sheet to calculate the input 
power values and the output power values so in the uh, blue color column i have uh, written the power inputs and power outputs and then using these values i have calculated the efficiency so as you can see from the experiment i am getting a maximum efficiency of 94.1619 percent at a load of around 0.5 amps or 500 milliamps to 1 amp and obviously at this point the input voltage was 15 volts and the output voltage was 10 volts so at this conversion i was getting a maximum of 94 percent of efficiency and obviously for the other ranges when the voltage has increased to 20 volts the efficiency has dropped to uh, 93.1 percent or 93.4 percent at some points so which means that the efficiency has slightly decreased as i increase the input voltage now another point to note here is that when i'm uh, testing at a load of only 100 milliamps it's only efficient as 91.3 percent and that is because it has some current consumption of the circuit itself which is accounted when i am testing at such a lower current value and i am getting a uh, the lowest efficiency obviously at 28 volts input and 1.9 volt output at 3 amps of current so that means that is the minimum efficiency that i can expect obviously it was the extreme test among all the other tests so it's quite useful for uh, small applications where we need around 2 or 2.5 amps of current at around 5 to 10 volts of voltage range so i'm quite happy with the performance of this dc to dc buck converter and i will put a buy link in the description if you like my work please subscribe to my channel like the video and share it among your friends and communities and if you want to support me in creating more contents like this there is a donate link also in the description you can follow that and any donation is highly appreciated so thank you very much for watching have a nice day